Good morning to those of you who are here in church and to those who are watching online. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This piece proclaims our Catholic belief that Mary, at the end of her life on earth, was assumed 
body and soul into heaven. This belief goes back perhaps as far as the second century and was accepted by the church at the Council of Ephesus in 431 AD. Finally, in 1950, Pope Pius XII proclaimed this belief as an official doctrine of the church. Mary is the only human being who was the daughter of the Father, the mother of the Son of God, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as with all our Catholic feasts in honor of Mary, this feast is ultimately about God. It is also about Mary's sharing in a special way in Jesus' resurrection. And therefore, it is about Jesus' victory over sin and death. And a reminder that we too will one day be in heaven with our body and soul. Please remember to silent your cell phones so that we can worship God without destruction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass and the preacher is Father Frank Icona. Let us sing number 205, Hail Holy Queen, 205. peace of our Lord, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Malangang humaga. Welcome one and all, especially those who may be visiting. Welcome as well to those who are watching via the internet. I am delighted to be with you. As you heard, I am Father Frank. I come to you 
from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And I'm delighted to be with you in this beautiful church as you celebrate your 100th anniversary and my brother Dominicans celebrating their 100th, 800th anniversary of their order. This is a big year. Wow. I come to you and I want to thank Father Roberto for the invitation to share the ministry of Cross Catholic Outreach, the ministry of bringing food, shelter, hope to the poorest of the poor. I have come to beg, and I'll tell you more later, but right now, let us all be mindful that we are here at our Lord's invitation. Not only to this holy banquet, great as that is, but also to celebrate with our Lord the fact that he and our Blessed Mother were united again. That's what we celebrate, the, ascension, the assumption of our Blessed Mother so that she, after her life on earth, was once again with her son. What more could we ask for? What greater gift could we ask for, for our mother? And you know what? That's exactly what they want for you and for me. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. As we prepare ourselves with our Lord and our Blessed Mother, knowing that they are always, always, always with us and they love us no matter what, we believe it. But sometimes we forget. And when we forget, boy, do we do all kinds of stupid stuff. And so as we begin our celebration with them, we ask them for forgiveness. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty ever living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nation with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Page, page 114. to the 
the palace of the king. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through men, the resurrection of the dead came also through men. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruit. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father. When he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And in your spirit. A proclamation of the good news according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor upon his lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. My brothers and sisters, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I said at the beginning, I really didn't have to because I'm sure you knew, today is a great solemnity. We celebrate our Blessed Mother returning home to be with her son, with God, for all eternity. And we are happy for her. How could we not be? And to think that they want the same thing for us. And isn't that what we want as well? To be with our Lord, with our Blessed Mother, for all eternity? What do we have to do to make that happen? Well, Mary, the first disciple, is our model, our example. We learn from her. What did she do? She heard the word of God, and she said, let it be done to me according to your word. And she brought that word to fulfillment. And she gave birth to that word. She gave birth to the Son of God. She gave life to God. And you and I are called to do the same thing. To hear the word of God spoken to us and to bring it to fruition to give it life, to give life to God. What is the word of God that he gave to us that we are called to bring to fruition, to give it life, to give our Lord life? Our Lord gave us the 11th commandment. He said to us, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I love you. And there's nothing we would rather do. Sometimes that word love gets a little confusing. What did our Lord mean when he said that? He gave us a very simple, a very profound example. The last time he got together with St. Peter, three times he asked him, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Feed my family. It is as if for our Lord, the word love and the word feed are synonymous. He could just as easily have said to us, I give you a new commandment. Feed one another as I feed you. And that's what he does. As Father Roberto said in his homily last week, our Lord invites us and gives us this bread of life so that we can be bread and give life to one another. I come begging for our Lord's family. I come begging for our Lord. Because he also said to us at the end of Matthew's gospel, if you love me, he's talking to us, if you love me, if you want to be with me for all eternity, here is the test. I was hungry, 
and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. And we don't have to ask when, he told us. Whenever you do it to the least of my little ones, you do it to me. I do indeed come begging for our Lord, who is dying of hunger. <clears throat> 25,000 times a day. That's how many people. That is the body of Christ that dies each and every day for lack of food, lack of water. It is as if our Lord is being crucified again. But not just once. 25,000 times each and every day. I have seen our Lord dying of hunger in too many places, most especially in Haiti, the poorest country in the Americas. And yesterday, hit with an earthquake that has already claimed the lives of over 300 people. But even without this tragedy of the earthquake, it is a very poor country, and many families have nothing, no food, no shelter, nothing. And often, <clears throat> the children come home starving, crying, and the moms don't know what to do. They have no food to give them. So what do they do? They give them what they call good, good bread, which is not good bread at all. It is mud cakes. And they put a little salt on them just so they will have some flavor. And that's what they feed their children, just so they will have something in their empty bellies. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is dry. You know, I tasted one of those mud cakes some years ago. I don't care how much salt you use. Mud is mud. I have seen our Lord dine of hunger in Manila, in Managua, Nicaragua, in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Right there in the middle of these large cities are these mountains but not the mountains that you might see in a travel brochure. These are mountains of stinking garbage, and the word stinking doesn't even come close to describing the awful stench that literally takes one's breath away. It gagged me. I could not breathe. I forced myself because I wanted to accompany our brothers and sisters to pray with them. I couldn't believe how many hundreds and maybe thousands who actually live on these garbage dumps, including children who should have been in a school or a playground. But that's where they were, and that's where they are. And from the crack of dawn to late at night, maybe under a hot sun or a driving rain, they scrounge around trying to find food. And if not food, some plastic to sell, to buy food. I have seen our Lord dine of thirst in Ethiopia. I went there to help open an orphanage. And one of my friends who was with me asked the bishop, good bishop, what can we do to help you? His response, how far does your wife have to walk to get water? That very day, some of us accompanied some children and their moms, and we carried these five gallon plastic jugs and we walked, mile after mile, hour after hour, till finally we got to a stream, and in that stream there were cattle standing, drinking, and doing everything else that comes natural. And that's the dirty water, the filthy water they brought home to drink, to cook with. Is it any wonder so many, especially children, die from cholera? At Cross Catholic Outreach, we are honored, we are proud, we are blessed to have been asked by a great Vatican organization to partner with them, Populorum Progressio, founded by St. John Paul II, to feed the hungry around the world. We work with bishops and priests and nuns and lay people to indeed bring food and water and shelter and medical care and schools for children because you know, I'm sure you know, 
It's not their fault that they were born poor, that they were born in a third world country instead of being blessed to be born in a country such as this. But you and I, we can do something to give them a better tomorrow, a brighter future, to give them hope. And education is the key. And we work with their moms and dads to give them some job skills. Perhaps we give the moms one of the old Singer sewing machines, remember those that used to pedal? The dads, perhaps we provide them with some poultry, some goats, some pigs to raise so that they can provide for their family and transform their lives and transform their communities. But we can't do it without you. We need your love. We need you to open your hearts. We need you to make a sacrifice. And don't be afraid of that word, because you've been sacrificing all your life for your loved ones. I'm going to ask you, I am asking you, for a sacrifice for God's loved ones, for God's family, for Mary's children. I put brochures in the pews. If you would do me a favor, since the brochures are at the ends, would you pass those, the brochures to those in the middle so that they too might have one? I think there's some up there for the choir. And please open it. When you do, you will see what we stand for. We're a Catholic ministry. You'll see the people we work for around the world where we work. You'll see there's a perforated line right down the middle. The two parts separate. The part with the picture of these two beautiful children and this holy nun, that is an envelope. We do not take a collection. But if you wish to make a contribution, you can give that to me as you leave, or there's a basket here under the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe if you go out this way. Or better yet, take it home, pray about it, mail your contribution. You don't need a stamp. It's already pre-posted. Before you make your decision, allow me to point out. You see that pie chart? Boy, that is so important. It tells you where your money goes. And before you give your money to anybody, even to a priest in church, you should know where your money goes. Straight to the poor, 95%. We do have expenses, but all our expenses put together, about five cents out of every dollar. There's a place for prayers. Please pray for us and know that we will be praying for you. Give us your name or the name of the person you want us to pray for or your intention. You, they, your intention will be in our prayers all year long. There are different ways to make a contribution. PayPal, credit card, a check. For those of you watching via the internet, there's a website, crosscatholic.org backslash outreach. crosscatholic.org backslash outreach. Or you can get there by texting a message, dialing 47 4747, the message blessings, you send it, it will take you to our, our website to show you not only how you can make a contribution, but also some videos of how your contribution is transforming the lives of the poor. Then make the best decision you can. There's some great suggestions here. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to make some suggestions. I said our Lord invited us to this holy banquet. Now, you know, I'm Italian. When somebody invites me to their home and feeds me, you know what we do, Italians? We invite them to our place, and we feed them. Maybe you do the same thing. What do you think about inviting our Lord home to have lunch or dinner with you? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Now, when you invite a special guest, Father Lorenzo, Bishop Gomez, Boy, you're going to spend a little bit more at the grocery store. How much more would you spend for this special guest? Is $100 too much? That's a lot of money. But for $100, you will have the honor and the privilege and the awareness that you are indeed dining with our Lord. He will not refuse your invitation. And for that same $100, you get to feed a child for a whole year, for a whole year. 
Perhaps the only meal they will get day in and day out is what you provide. What a miracle. And more, for that same hundred dollars, you give them the clothes they need and the education they need for a whole year so that they can transform their lives. It's a great miracle. You can make it happen. Even at 20 a month for five months, you can do it. Some of you perhaps can do more, maybe 100 a month for five months. $500 is a lot of money. For 500, you can bring water to a village that gives not only clean water, but life to a whole village. What a great miracle. Really, the only thing you have to ask yourself is, how great of a sacrifice, how big of a miracle do I want to make happen to say thank you to our Lord for this sacrifice, for this miracle? Ask yourself, how badly do I want to be in heaven with Mary, with Jesus, for all eternity? How badly do I want to give life to our Lord who is dying of hunger? Do the best you can. Thank you. God bless you. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With every confidence that our Lord is here to pray with us, not only to listen to our prayers, but to actually pray with us, we now offer our petitions. That the church, like the Virgin Mary, may bring Christ into the world with joy and dedication and be joined with him in endless life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessing upon Father Frank Icona and Cross Catholic Outreach in their work to serve the poor throughout the world. May our parish be generous in sharing our blessing with those in need. And may those who are venerable receive the help they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have left the practice of the faith, that through the intercession of the Queen of Heaven, they receive the grace to return to the sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For perseverance and quick relief for all those suffering from the pandemic, fires, and other natural disaster, and for those who are protecting and caring for them. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Asuncion R. Salonga, for her birthday, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our book of intentions and those we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's remember in a very special way today the people of Haiti who have suffered this additional casualty, over 300 who have died, and perhaps a hurricane heading their way, that they might find strength, comfort, peace, and knowing that they are not alone, that our Lord, our Blessed Mother, are always with them, and we too, through our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, loving God, for listening to our prayers. Thank you for always being attentive to our needs. May we be attentive to yours. May we be attentive to your voice, most especially in the cry of the poor. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the womb, of the tomb, since from her own body, she marvelously brought forth your incarnate son, the author of life. <clears throat> and so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our bishop, our pope, Jose, our bishop, Roberto, our pastor, all your clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone through the rest and the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, though, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our mother, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say or sing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be always with you. Amen. Thank you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We say the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Three seven six servant song three seventy six.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Father Roberto has some announcements. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, First of all, I want to thank Father Frank for preaching at all our masses this weekend for his work with Cross Catholic Outreach. And I'll say one more announcement about that at the end of the announcements. So uh, first of all, I want to remind all of you who are part of our ministries, if you serve in any way here at uh, St. Dominic's, to remind you that you must be certified or recertified with Virtus, the safe environment program that the Catholic Church in the United States requires of all volunteers, including us priests and so on. So it's, again, it's our church's way of trying to respond to the sex abuse crisis that has horrified all of us. But in order to overcome that crisis, we have to make sure that we're all trained uh, in, that, uh, in those safe environment protocols. So please, if you've not done so, you need to do so before we begin our year of ministry in the next few weeks. Uh, so please do that. Uh, and you can call the office if you need more information. There's information in the bulletin about those classes that are being offered. And again, this COVID pandemic is uh, resurging and so on. So we here at St. Dominic's, the Dominicans, all the staff, we joined Pope Francis, we joined the bishops of the United States, including Archbishop Gomez, our own Archbishop. We include, uh, we join with health experts who say the best way to overcome the pandemic is to get vaccinated. Please, if you have some kind of political belief about this, overcome that belief so that we can get rid of this virus. You must be vaccinated to help us overcome it. So please do that for the common good. And in today's bulletin message, I include some positive information about our Catholic Church. So often the media presents a negative image of our church, and this is uh, some statistics to show that our Catholic Church has helped so many people during this pandemic, just in this Archdiocese of Los Angeles, uh, some, some great uh, information about how we've been so helpful and, and generous in helping others. So please check out that bulletin message for those of you that are online, it's at the end of the packets you received. And again, just to remind you, as Father Frank mentioned in his homily, to support uh, Cross Catholics outreach to some of the poor people. And as you know, Haiti has been hit yet again with this earthquake uh, yesterday. So please be generous. There are brochures in the, in the pews. Put your donation in the, the brochure. You can give it to Father Frank, who'll be in the vestibule after Mass, or you can place it in the basket over here underneath the image of Our Lady Guadalupe and be as generous as you can. And once again, thanks, Father Frank, for Thank your you. Preaching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for coming to Mass. Thanks to our choir for coming back and all the ministers who serve week after week and day after day sometimes here at the parish. God bless you all. Thank you, Father. Please stand. Thank you all for celebrating with us this morning and enriching our celebration with your presence and participation, especially with this beautiful choir. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes. And all the ministers could not do this without you. You know, as I get older, I forget stuff. Maybe you do too. If you forget everything in life, never, never, never forget the Lord is with you. And may our loving God bless us all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended then. Let us go and make miracles. Thanks be to God. 205, third verse. 205, third verse.